The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel is a true marvel of construction and the longest continuous underwater tunnel in the United States. It could have been a bridge if Robert Moses, chairman of the Triborough Bridge Authority, had his way. His plan to build a bridge that connected Manhattan and Brooklyn divided public opinion. But this became a tremendously unpopular idea because it would have ruined the lower Manhattan skyline. If you can imagine a huge bridge off Battery Park. The most famous protester of the bridge was Eleanor Roosevelt, who wrote in her column, My Day, it's a newspaper column she had at the time, that it was really a shame that in the name of efficiency we were going to have to lose the skyline and, and lose the park. The designer and chief engineer of the tunnel, Ollie Singstead, was fired because he didn't back Moses' plan for the bridge. The controversy was put to an end on July 17, 1939, when Secretary of War Harry Woodring vetoed the bridge for national security reasons. Conceived in 1929, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel was proposed to relieve traffic on the three East River bridges. It took another seven years for the project to be approved. Tunnel construction began in October of 1940 with President Franklin D. Roosevelt attending the groundbreaking ceremony. Robert Olmsted, an engineer who worked on the tunnel between 1946 to 1949, explains how a tunnel of such great importance was built. The battery tunnel is built by what we call the shield method. The shield is a device that covers the part of the tunnel that has already been built and projects out a bit ahead of that so that the workers can work under its protection. The front of the shield had a cutting edge that was 31 feet in diameter. The rear had an arm which placed the steel rings that then lined the tunnel. There were a total of four tunnels that were excavated, one each from Manhattan and Brooklyn and two from Governor's Island. I was uh, the first one to walk from Manhattan to Governor's Island after the tunnel was holed through. The tunnel workers, also known as sand hogs, worked in compressed air under very stressful conditions. It was very warm, it was very misty, it was very noisy because they were drilling in rock and it was very quiet as they were loading the holes with dynamite and then boom, 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 after the cry, fire in the hole and I was ready to quit right then and there but I did last another two and a half years. Due to material shortages during World War II, construction on the tunnel ceased for three years. With the merger of the Triborough Bridge and the New York City Tunnel Authority, work resumed in the fall of 1945. In September of 1948, when the tubes met in the middle of New York Harbor, they were only three-eighths of an inch off center. Incredible accuracy for its day. Over the next year and a half, the concrete linings of the tubes, the wall, ceiling tiles, and pavement were completed. On May 25, 1950, Opening ceremonies were held for the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Mayor William O'Dwyer and other dignitaries attended. I'm happy to compliment not only the engineers, George Spargo and his group of the Bridge and Tunnel Authority, but to Bob Moses. The total cost of this project was over $90 million. During the first year of its opening, 13.9 million vehicles passed through this piece of New York history. Ten years ago, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel celebrated the 50th anniversary of its opening. Well, working in the tunnel it, it was quite hard for the uh, Sandhawks. They had to drill and blast a rock, and then uh, when they had to work on the compress there, they had what they call a shield, and the shield pushed through this what they call muck. The project was so important that the President of the United States presided over the groundbreaking ceremony. The contractor came over to me and said, Louie, I want you to do a good thing, and it's a favor to me, too. Said, what am I going to do? He says, well, we want you to break ground for the President of the Pope for the tunnel. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel is a prototype in engineering. But this year's celebration isn't just about the tunnel, it's also about those who played a critical role after the attack on the World Trade Center. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel's Manhattan Plaza is located minutes from the World Trade Center, the Ground Zero site. We look at it daily, we think about it often, and it has certainly changed how we do business. Our officers take great pride in what they do to ensure the safety of the motoring public as well as the safety of this facility. 
One of the highlights that we look forward to each year is our participation in the five mile run walk from here through the tunnel to the uh, Ground Zero site, retracing the footsteps of firefighter Steven Silla. Easy Pass usage at the facility has increased since 9-11 as motorists have become more familiar with the system and its time-saving advantages. It has changed how we do business, it's changed our staffing, it's changed the motoring public's experience at our facility. I'm always amazed and I often tell people that when I first came here and the more I learned about this place, I always think back to 70 years ago where some folks sat around the table talking about let's do this. We can dig a hole and put a tunnel there and make it work and 60 years later it's still here. And I always ended by saying and they did it without a computer. From South Brooklyn to the World Financial Center, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel connects two culturally diverse boroughs linking New York's past, present, and future. Reporting for Transit Transit News, I'm Dave Wallen.